The movie is set far in the future when the world has been divided into two halves. The first half is called the offshore, where people live in luxury, while the second one is a slum with no hospitals, schools, medicines, vaccines, or employment. Every person from the slums is given a single chance in their lives to upgrade to offshore. When they turn 20, they have to go through a selection procedure, mainly referred to as the process. Only 3% of the people are selected in the said procedure. The selected ones get to live their life free of all problems, while the others are sent back to the slums to continue their miserable way of living. One morning, it is announced that the 104th process is about to start. Everyone who has registered for the process is requested to come to the headquarters. One of the participants this year includes a girl named Michelle. A ring behind her ears tells her that she will reach the headquarters in 40 minutes. The device was inserted when she registered for the process. Everyone who has participated has a device embedded in them that acts as their official identity. Michelle and her friend from the block named Bruna nervously make their way to the headquarters alongside several other 20-year-olds. They are made to change into the uniform before entering. Following that, the chief overseer of the process named Ezekiel gives them a speech about the importance of the program. It turns out that the program was invented by someone called the Founding Couple. He doesn't go in-depth about the founders, but mentions the rebellious group who opposed the idea. After the speech, Ezekiel meets a new employee named Aline. She reveals that she has come from offshore to evaluate his performance. Ezekiel is not happy about the intrusion but cannot go against the orders from the higher officials. Meanwhile, the participants are sent to the interview rooms to be evaluated by the officers from offshore. This is their first task, and the ones who are deemed unfit will have to return home before the competition even starts. Michelle's interviewer asks her several personal questions about her life. She reveals that her boyfriend came as a participant last year and hasn't returned home. She assumes he succeeded, but the interviewer suggests it can be otherwise. He might have died in an unfortunate event, which is not uncommon for the participants. To test her emotional dependency on her boyfriend, she is asked to remove a locket that is very significant to her. When she does it without hesitation, the interviewer selects her. At the same time, a guy named Marco confidently answers all the questions. Everyone in his family has always passed the selection, so he is confident that he can make it to the end. His lack of fear gets him through the first round. The same cannot be said for a guy named Alex. He confidently talks about himself for 20 minutes but is rejected because his words didn't sound authentic. He makes a fuss about the competition being unfair before being taken away. Then we are introduced to Joanna, a girl who doesn't like to talk a lot. She is the smartest out of the lot. Lastly, there is Fernando, a handicapped man whose chances of survival are less because of his disability. Still, his determination gets him through the interview. The group ignores each other for the time being, unaware that their fates are about to intertwine. Somewhere else in the facility, an employee named Agatha has found a mole in their program. It turns out that a man has been sent by the rebellious group called The Cause to get information from the inside. He is currently being tortured to reveal who else is in on the plan. After being severely beaten, he reveals that the new batch of participants also has a mole. Ezekiel and Agatha have to remove the person as soon as possible to maintain peace throughout the rest of the program. Back in the headquarters, Alex commits the unthinkable because he wasn't selected. The others are shocked by the incident and have to be taken to the other room by the officials. After that, their ear devices are scanned to make sure they are registered participants. Joanna notices that the guy in front of her named Raphael has three stitches behind his ears, which is different from the usual two-stitch implant. She calls him out for being a fraud, but he insists as he was legitimately registered. When scanned, the monitor verifies him. Joanna is sure that he has passed the test using a trick, but she doesn't notify the officials, planning to use the information to her advantage. Then the time they have been waiting for finally arrives, and they are taken to a room for their first task. A set of building blocks have been placed in the middle of the table. The participants have to use them to build nine cubes in ten minutes. The task starts, but Orlando struggles to reach the blocks. Michelle helps him out of instinct before taking the blocks for herself. They immediately get to work and continue as the timer ticks. In the last few seconds, Michelle struggles to create the last cube. Seeing her struggle, Fernando helps her and creates a bigger cube out of the eight cube S she had already created. When the timer stops, Rafael is still one cube behind, so he steals from a guy beside him. The management lets him get away with it, 
and he passes the round. Similarly, Joanna has created 11 cube S, which makes her pass as well. Michelle also has 9 cube S, although one of them is bigger, which makes her pass. After the game, everyone starts looking at Raphael differently. They call him a cheater and talk behind his back. He deliberately causes a fight and gets beaten up by a group of people. When they eventually stop, the participants who were insulting him earlier now sympathize with him. His plan works, but it doesn't go unnoticed by a smart Joanna. She asks him to be on her side because if he betrays her, she will tell the official about his false registration. In Ezekiel's office, Aline is interviewing him on his way of handling the process. She is eager to find a flaw in his work so she can take over his position. For this purpose, she also brings up his wife's name. But before we get to know more about her, they are interrupted. Meanwhile, Agatha finds out that either Michelle or Bruna is the mole from the rebel group. They are brought aside and asked to reveal which one of them is with the group. The two have been neighbors all their lives and have always been close to each other. If they do not tell the truth, Agatha will have no way but to kill both of them. When she is not looking, Michelle suggests they attack her since it's the only way to survive. Bruna agrees to the plan in the heat of the moment. Agatha returns, but Michelle betrays Bruna at the last second, making her the only one who attacks Agatha. In the following commotion, she is shot dead, and Michelle is let free. It is then revealed that Michelle is actually the mole and is working for the rebel group. Although she and Bruna had been friends since childhood, she sacrificed her for a bigger purpose. The story about her boyfriend was also made up to be selected. In reality, she is going offshore to look for her brother, who went through the process and never returned. In the following scene, we are introduced to Fernando, his background. He was raised by his father, who fostered in him the singular purpose of passing the process. All his life, all Orlando has known is to not let his disability be a drawback between him and offshore. During a physical check, he is taken to a doctor who injects him with a medicine. To his surprise, the medicine induces pain in his legs. For the first time in his life, the doctor affirms that if he passes the process, he will be able to get proper treatment and can walk someday. Orlando doesn't know how to feel about the news because he had already accepted that he will never walk. For the next task, the participants are put into a group and taken to a room. It consists of four mannequins at the dinner table with different expressions on their faces. The group has to figure out what happened to the woman in navy blue clothing. They quickly begin to analyze the situation, suggesting their own ideas. After a lot of contemplating, Orlando comes to the conclusion that the lady was poisoned. Her husband is the man sitting by her because both of them have dirt on their shoes, so they must be the guests at the other couple's house. However, in the time of emergency, she is turning toward the other man. This could mean that she was having an affair with him and hence was poisoned by his wife who cooked the meal. This also explains the expressionless face of the wife. Fernando is goddamn Sherlock Holmes. The group agrees with the suggestions, but Raphael objects. No one cares because Raphael is an idiot. He proposes the theory that the woman is having an allergic reaction to the silver cutleries. Since everyone is wearing at least one silver jewelry, and the woman is wearing a glass ring and a wooden necklace, he assumes she is allergic to silver. She is turning toward the man other than her husband because he is a doctor. Unlooking through the drawers, they find diagrams of the human body which hints towards the same. But this still doesn't explain why the host female has an expressionless face. Joanna, who had been quiet the entire time, reveals that the woman is blind because she has no lamp on her side of the study table. They check the other drawer and find a book written in Braille. In the end, Raphael's assumption is proven to be true. Still, one of their teammates is eliminated for doing nothing to help the group. For the third round, Ezekiel asks Eileen for help to monitor the game since he is short-staffed. She accepts the offer but is a bit suspicious of Ezekiel. Hence, when the competition starts, she goes looking for him and finds him exiting the headquarters. He wears a beaten-up robe and goes into the slums disguised as a beggar. At the same time, the remaining groups are taken to a room each. For this round, they are given six coins for seven people in the room. The group will have to collectively decide who to eliminate in 15 minutes. At last, the ones who walk out with a coin will pass. Raphael takes a coin in his hand, claiming it as his own. He is determined to win the round one way or the other. But when Marco forcefully asks him to return the coin, he has to oblige. After contemplating, the group settles on voting. Initially, everyone votes for Raphael because of his obvious, unlikable personality. But then Michelle votes for Joanna. Joanna looks at Raphael, asking him to take a stand for her. Afraid that she will reveal his secret, 
He does as told and casts his vote for Fernando. Since he has the least chance of winning anyway, Rafael wants to throw him under the bus. However, Fernando argues that the doctor told him he can get proper treatment offshore. This means she believed his disability is not a drawback. At last, the, the group settles to draw names and let fate decide who wins. Outside, Aline is monitoring Ezequiel's every move. He goes deep into the underdeveloped city in disguise but doesn't seem to stop anywhere. Suddenly he notices the camera glowing green and realizes someone is watching him. He runs away and drops a bunch of fruit on his way. In the meantime, the group resorts to drawing out a ribbon and eliminating whoever gets the shortest piece. At last, Joanna gets it and is eliminated. As the winners walk outside, the last guy realizes he has no coin. It turns out that Joanna had stolen it while the others argued. So even though she lost, she tricked the last guy into being eliminated. If you can't beat him, make sure they lose too. She smugly joins the rest of the group in the last scene, ready to do anything to win.